Hi, today we are going to be applying the conservation of energy to analyze and explain energy transformations. And uh, specifically, we're going to look at the case when kinetic energy or gravitational potential energy is converted to thermal energy. So there's a video before this one um, that goes through the more basic example of uh, all the energy being converted back to kinetic or potential energy rather than thermal energy. So watch that video first if this one's a little bit tricky. Um, so here's our simulation that we're going to use. Um, and before, our, in our simplified model, uh, we assume that there was no friction. So here we see that the total energy is not changing that's the same throughout, and energy is just being converted from one form to the other form. Now we're going to include some sort of friction. And I think it's really important to note, the most important concept here is that this yellow bar, the total energy doesn't actually change. It's just being transferred to heat, heat energy. Um, so that'll be really key in our, our calculations from a conceptual standpoint. The problem that we're going to look at today is... Um, if the skater's mass is 80 kilograms, how much energy is converted to heat, thermal energy, with this scenario? So here we have some information looking at these pictures. The skater starts with just gravitational potential energy. Um, that's its total energy. Uh, and that's being converted to kinetic energy and, in this case, thermal energy as well. So... Again, the conservation of energy, probably the most fundamental principle about this is these two yellow bars are exactly the same. The total amount of energy doesn't change. Um, so we can write that as a mathematical expression, which is the initial total energy, so this is our initial scenario, um, is equal to our final total energy. So these two yellow bars have not changed. And there's a variety of forms that this energy can take. Uh, I'm going to write them all out, and you'll notice, for example, um, that some of these values are going to be zero. So, for example, at the top of the, the ramp here, this skater has zero kinetic energy. So the simulation is showing that at this point they must be at rest. Um, they could have gravitational potential energy. So in this case, we do. If you have some height above a particular surface. Um, they could have kinetic, so now it's our final location, they have kinetic energy. Um, here we'll notice that they'll have zero gravitational potential energy. And I'll show you this, show this through the calculations in just a moment. And uh, the final piece, which is a new piece for us, is that we'll have thermal energy. Um, and we've got to account for that. So the question is really how much energy is converted to thermal energy? So we want to figure out what is the thermal energy? What, what's converted to heat here? So um, if you recall, our, our equation for kinetic energy is one half times the object's mass times its speed squared. This I refers to initial. Gravitational potential energy is the object's mass times this gravitational constant uh, near the surface of, of Earth or sea level. We're going to approximate this number as 9.8 meters per second squared um, times its initial height. Um, final kinetic energy, again, we have our equation. We're final, we're representing with the letter F. We have final gravitational potential energy and again thermal. So uh, you might notice that at the beginning they're at rest. So their initial speed is zero. Zero times any number is just zero. So this is why we can just completely erase this term right from the beginning. Gravitational potential energy, we're given the object's mass. G is 9.8. And this person's height above the ground is six meters. Again, I'm leaving these units out net for now just to simplify this. The final velocity, um, we're given the object's mass and we're also given their speed in this question. So we know something about that. Their height above the ground is zero, their final height. So again, this is why we can just ignore this term. And 
there's thermal energy. So now we've done the physics, now it just turns into an algebra problem. Algebra problem. We're essentially trying to isolate for this value. So how are we going to do that? Let's subtract this term from both sides. After we've done that, we find our answer of uh, 1,814 joules. So energy is measured in joules. So the learning goal for today was, can you apply the conservation of energy to explain and analyze energy transformations? Um, and specifically, we were looking at a case where energy is converted to thermal energy. So hopefully you can do that a little bit better now. Um, and thanks for watching.